Um, so my name is Sabiha. Um, I live in Orlando. I'm actually um, active with or um, RBN's Orlando chapter. And I'd like to start with, I wanted to share a story about a patient um, that I took care of a few years ago. Um, I think oftentimes when you are healthy or when you have money, um, you don't really fully see um, how dysfunctional our healthcare system is. So I wanted to share a story about a patient that I took care of. She was a young woman in her mid-30s, and she noticed a lump on her breast. She had insurance through the ACA, um, but because her insurance had a high deductible, she couldn't afford the doctor's appointments, the co-pays for the imaging that she needed, the biopsy, the, essentially the workup for this, this mass, this lump that she had in her breast. The lump predictably grew. Um, it grew to the point where it actually grew out of her skin. And she had a large fungating mass on her left breast. But still, she could not afford to see a doctor and to get that worked up. It wasn't until she got to a point where she wasn't able to breathe. Um, she was so short of breath that she, she couldn't work. She couldn't take care of her kids. So she came into the ER, um, was admitted to the hospital, and that's when I met her. Um, it turns out that she had a cancer, a breast cancer, which had spread to her lungs and was causing her lungs to fill up with fluid, um, with a cancerous fluid. So that, that's a stage four cancer. That's what we call a metastatic cancer that has spread. And at that point, her cancer is not curable. Had she had the resources to seek medical care when she first noticed that lump, that could have been caught at a stage where her cancer would have been potentially curable. But now, it was not curable. Um, while she was in the hospital, I actually did meet her entire family. Um, I met her, her kids, I met her siblings, I met her parents, her husband. Um, she, she eventually died, and, you know, she was a wife, she was a mother, she was a daughter, a sister, a friend, a neighbor, um, she was a fellow human being. And now, she's part of a statistic, right? She is one of the 68,000 people who die in this country every year from a lack of health care. So why, why does this happen? We're, we're the wealthiest country in the world. Why does this happen? And the bottom line is, fundamentally, the bottom line is that we are denied health care so that the CEOs of health insurance companies, pharmaceutical companies, these big hospital conglomerate companies, so their CEOs can buy a second vacation home in Italy. That, so we are denied health care so they can buy their third yacht. That's fundamentally the reason why we do not have health care in this country. That, to me, is what I would call deplorable. I think that is depraved, morally depraved, um, and unacceptable. And this happens with the support of both corrupted corporate capitalist parties. They tell us that we can't afford universal health care coverage. I think back in 2020, Joe Biden had said that if Medicare for All came across his desk, he would veto it over the price tag. But yet, what one thing that I'm sure we've all noticed is that ever since the ever since October, we have no problem sending billions and billions of dollars to Israel for a candidate, for a, a proxy war. This is unacceptable, and this has to change. And I feel that we, as the people of this land, we, we cannot support anyone who is seeking power, who is allowing this type of healthcare system to continue. To me, I support Medicare for all, but I support Medicare for all as a compromise. To me, the ideal system would be a well-funded, 
well-protected, socialized healthcare system. Uh, well, I'm the other physician that's up here. I guess the third physician. Uh, it's, uh, well, I just want to say I'm honored to be here. Um, I really didn't expect to be on a panel, you know, with Jill Stein and uh, with everyone here. It's, it's really an honor. But the reason that I came down to Chicago with, uh, with my friend Sabika, um, and fellow physician, is because we live in an emergency. We have an emergency. It's, it's, it's a time of emergency right now. Uh, I'm not only a physician, but I'm also Palestinian. Uh, I grew up in the United All of you here, um, you see the images, the the, uh, the genocide of, of people, of children. Uh, two and a half million people trapped in a death camp, half of whom are children. Uh, that's what we're opposing. It's a very simple request. It's amazing that that is uh, a demand that we have to request of our leaders, because that's how indecent they are. Uh, both parties are run by genocidal racists uh, who the life of people abroad and people here at home. Uh, I, I see this both uh, here at, at home. Uh, I take care of patients at a safety net hospital. Uh, and see the, the care and neglect that our society provides to people at home. And I see that translated uh, overseas to, to my ancestors and my relatives back in Palestine. The state government is responsible for both. Uh, I also see the attack of my colleagues and healthcare workers in Palestine that are systematically targeted and killed and murdered. Um, I think that's something that hasn't been highlighted very much, but I think something that, that we all need to raise awareness for. Um, I also want to say that, you know, the, the genocide that, that is happening in Palestine um, is also similar to the genocide of, 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 of people here in the United States who lack health care. Um, at least 68,000 people die a year, um, and that's why we need uh, a different path forward. Uh, the Democrats are not our salvation. I was one of the few people that, or one of many people, that fell for the, the Bernie Sanders campaign um, over the last few years. Um, our, our job now is to organize because this is an emergency. We have a genocide that's ongoing that has to end now. Um, we, have to end, we have to call for a ceasefire now. We have to have an arms embargo linked with that. And we have to end the occupation. Without that, the same light, we have a medical emergency in this country. Uh, the ACA uh, that was brought to us by the Obama administration is a corporate giveaway. It's not health care. Yeah. Right. We need a fully funded, fully socialized system that provides coverage for everybody, regardless of who they are and how much money they make. Tired of seeing patients who can't get the care that they need and deserve just because we live in a system that's more interested in um, lining the pockets of corporations and, and their executives that it is about taking care of people. We live in a climate emergency. Um, capitalism um, run by this country and corporations um, that run this country are driving the planet to, to death. Uh, this, is, this is pivotal. It's important for us to intervene. None of the two parties are interested in doing anything of substance to help the planet. And uh, that's, that's the main reason why I'm supporting Dr. Stein. I want to really, I'm, I'm honored to be here. Uh, I'm honored to give my perspective and, uh, uh, and the genocide and the occupation uh, uh, arms of Barbara now.